Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Car Wash Magazine Live. Here we are again, friends. It is Thursday. Happy Thursday to everybody out there, especially you, Tom Tilford. Uh, see Brian Olson. Uh, thanks for joining us on the stream today. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, at the front end of this program, you all see a bunch of logos scrolling by and you're probably wondering, what are those? Well, uh, those are uh, some of the um, thought leaders in this industry. So those, these are folks who are super passionate about this industry on the supplier side. And they are uh, big promoters of what we're doing at ICA, and they are big uh, promoters of the professional car wash industry. And so we thank them for their support. Um, check those vendors out if you are uh, looking for some new product, uh, you know, some new equipment, some new systems, whatever that might be. Great partners to look at. So I've got some news for you all this week. We are going to jump right into it. I want to make sure that uh, you all download the app. All right, so download that app, get this news, get this information, get these videos, get these podcasts, get all the things uh, that you need um, wherever you might be. So make sure you do that. Uh, if you if you need that QR code again, you can download that in any of your um, app stores. You can get that in uh, any of any really of your um, <laughs> content consumption locales, if you will. So. Now, let's get into the news, shall we? I want to talk about two quick news items for you, and then I'm, I've got a little something I want to share with you about grand openings uh, that I think is going to be pretty cool. So, uh, number one in the news, let's bring it up, shall we? So, we've got Mint Eco uh, down in Palm Beach. They're investing a, wait for it, a Mint. Yes, friends, they are investing a Mint. It's $150 million they're investing uh, in their expansion down in that region. So, watch out for big things coming out of that group. I, I believe they're... Uh, stated goals uh, in the news article are 20 washes by the end of uh, calendar 2024. They want to get to 50 by 2030. So that is what it is. Uh, be exciting to watch their growth and see what happens. So uh, what else do we want to talk about? Well, I think this one's pretty cool. Um, we've got Everwash kicking it up a notch with Major League Soccer. So what does that mean? Everwash has partnered with the Philadelphia Union uh, Football Club there in the major league soccer league uh, and so they are the official car wash uh sponsor partner i don't know how you <laughs> how you engineer that but uh, that's a big move for them and that's really indicative of where everwash is going where they want to be and what they want to uh, accomplish here as an organization as a business as a big component of the car wash industry so check them out watch out for that uh, super exciting stuff for them. Coming up, we've got some some great conversations for you guys today. We've got uh, our um, on-site visit to St. Cloud, Minnesota, where we checked out Crew Car Wash's grand opening there. So we're going to have that conversation for you. We've also got uh, another snippet of Wade and Nick's picks, uh, some special guest contributions. They visited um, with an exhibitor down at the Southwest Car Wash show uh, to check out some LED lights. We'll, we'll share that with you here in just a minute. And then we've got this thing that I want to do. So I, I set this up yesterday, um, so we'll see how this goes, but I thought it was really cool, and it's actually uh, one of the primary reasons that I actually went to the St. Cloud uh, grand opening. So I know we're always trying to find um, cool stuff to do for grand openings. How do we get more coverage? How do we get customers there? All these things. Let's check this out. I'm going to do a little bit of an, uh, an unboxing. Let's get to it. Let's get to the kit for you. Okay, so we're going to get... Uh, this is what we're going to do. This has been sitting behind me for a couple of weeks now. Um, and I want to share with you all what is inside of this. Because this this little box, this is the reason I went to St. Cloud. So we're going to share that with you. Um, because I, you know, friends, it's cold in Minnesota. And you're going to hear me say that a few times. But it's cold. And I didn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to this grand opening. But let's show you what's inside here. And uh, I'll tell you why I ultimately made the decision to go so here we go uh, let's get that right here so you can see here here's this cool box right so crew car wash this comes in the mail for me and i'm like all right somebody sending me swag this can't be this can't be uh this can't be a good sign for me but you open it up and let's check it out okay so here's a, a couple of things to note right off the bat personalized right that's got my name that's me in case you didn't know that's me that's that's my name uh, personalized note card um, that's got a, a certificate for a wash in there that's pretty cool um, and then you've just got some swag in here right and it's all on brand right it's all on brand here you go here's the pop socket uh, a couple of pens down here yep so those are cool an air freshener um, even the confetti is brand uh, brand aligned which I love 
uh, a little wireless charger in there, and then a, uh, let's check this out. I actually haven't pulled this out. So let's check this out. Uh, a pretty neat uh, crew car wash water bottle. And look at that, like, like that's like eco, eco-friendly or something with the bamboo, the bamboo stick and all that kind of stuff. So that's super cool. Uh, one little, here's a little nuance for you though, right? So I love this press kit, I love this packaging. Um, what is actually really uh, well thought out, and it might be something that you don't realize, is the placement of these things as you open them, and which way which way things are facing, right? So as I open, look at the box, look at the logo, okay, that's facing me. Once I flip this up, right, I'm gonna flip it up and I'm gonna open it, all the branded merch inside was packaged so that it was facing me, right? Even the pens, even these pens that are, that are loose down in here, package so it's facing me. I know that feels like a little thing, but that's an attention to detail thing. And I think that that makes all the difference in the world in terms of uh, overall experience of when you open that. So that's a cool kit idea. If you guys are interested uh, in checking that out for your next grand opening and you want to get some press there, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know. I responded. I, I went. So that's, that's that for you. I just wanted to share that with you all because I know we're always searching for ideas there. Uh, now, uh, if you can wait for it, you're going to wait just a few more minutes here for the full conversation with Crew Car Wash. Uh, but right now, we're going to go to Wade and Nick uh, with Wade and Nick's picks. Hi, Wade Keith here with Breeze Through Car Wash. I'm on the floor at the SCWA today with Nick Lopez and Michael Call of Mile High Lighting Systems. Uh, Michael. What kind of products is it that, that you offer here at the show? What is it, what is it you do? So I am a manufacturer distributor of car wash lighting. Um, I make about seven lights, specifically with my own brand, specifically for car washes. I also distribute for a company called Cree. They're based out of Wisconsin. They're kind of a billion dollar company. So wherever uh, they do not have a light that I think works really well for car washes, that's where I come in and I make something that I think is more reliable and a better value. So how do, you, uh, how do you create a competitive advantage with the products you offer to similar other products we might see here at the show? Really, to me, it's, it's about three things. One, reliability. Um, I cannot stand uh, changing uh, ballasts, drivers. Uh, maintenance is a big issue. So one of the key components to that is the failure points in a light is really where it connects, where your, your power comes in. My light, as you can see in the background here, is one long length of light. So if you put it on an arch, uh, it is one 20 foot, one 24 foot long light. You got a, a sealed end and a connection point. I silicone seal those in my shop completely tight. Uh, heat shrink it again, it's watertight when I send it out. Um, second, I really try to make a light that stands out. I want a light that has visual impact, that feels like it's part of the equipment. I want a light that that visually stuns a customer. Um, you can see from my light, it looks like a solid line of light. It doesn't look like little dots. Um, it's more expensive to make that way, but I think the visual impact is, is cool. Having one continuous light, I also think looks better. The way this thing mounts, the end product mounts directly to the equipment flush. So it looks like it's part of the equipment, it looks like it's part of uh, the wash or even part of the chemicals being applied, it doesn't look like it's this light that's been added on to the shooting. So I think the customers end up with a, an experience that looks like, wow, that's pretty stunning. I think you were telling me earlier that, that your stuff is rated up to IP68, which yeah. I know, and those for people who don't understand those ratings, means that he could sink this stuff 30 feet below the ocean and it still work, which is pretty incredible. My other real question is, how does it function? Uh, will it function with music and, and other kind of new novel uh, project board ideas with lights as, as they kind of moved out into Christmas light shows and things yeah. like that? Oh my gosh, the Christmas lights are going crazy. And quite frankly, that technology is hitting the car wash market too. So from, a, from an IP standpoint, waterproofing standpoint, you're exactly right. Everything that I do is between IP65 and IP68, depending on where we're sticking the light. If we're putting it up 30 feet up in a tunnel, IP60, higher IP ratings are more expensive. Don't put an IP68 light 30 feet up in a tunnel where you're not gonna get any spray. I can put something up there, it's gonna provide great illumination. You don't have to pay for the IP rating. 
if you're going to put something right on a chemical arch with high pressure spray, spray two, three feet from it, uh, you probably want to go for a higher IP rating on that. That's that's exactly what we certainly we don't with. make our tunnels friendly. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can definitely say that that in, in my career in marketing, that, that lights and adding um, the entertainment value to the tunnel becomes more, it makes this whole process become more of an experience. Something that you go and take your kids to do and really enjoy and enthrall. Whereas car washing in the old days was just kind of a service thing you did. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah. Thank you, you know. for bringing this to our industry and a lot of respect for a small businessman who takes care of his own products. All right, that was Wade and Nick's picks, a special segment for you from two uh, friends of the program, uh, if you will, special guest contributors. Now, friends, we are diving into the meat of this program, our conversation with Billy Shamming and Sally Grant from Crew Car Wash during their grand opening. Uh, I just want to say before we get into this, um, there is a full uh, conversation coming your way uh, in podcast format. It's a little different. We had the opportunity to talk to a lot of team members at Crew when we were on site there. So um, the podcast version of this conversation gives you a lot of the the, the additional uh, insight and perspective from others. This interview for you is focused on uh, Billy and Sally, and we give you some beautiful drone footage of the Crew Car Wash in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Hey everybody, it's Matt DeWolf, Editor-in-Chief of Car Wash Magazine. We've got a special treat for you today. We are standing on location in St. Cloud, Minnesota at the newest Crew Car Wash. And you know what? It's amazing. Uh, they are stacked uh, deep over here in the pay, in the pay stations, uh, but there are actually are no pay stations here. We're going to get into that. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance of people and a lot of really great community ties for what this organization is doing and has been doing since 1948. These are one of the original car wash families, friends, and we're going to talk about that today. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, join us on this adventure at Crew Car Wash. <laughs> Uh, we are standing in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Behind me is uh, the latest crew car wash. And so now we're gonna have a little conversation for you uh, with some of the folks behind this operation. And so standing here, we've got Sally and Billy. Hey, welcome. Thanks thank for standing you. here. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming out today. So, okay. You guys have a tried and true tra tradition in the car wash industry. This is like car wash OG. Like this is like 1948, Indiana. Uh, Mike's Minuteman Car Wash in uh, in that state, first one in the state. Yes. You guys have evolved since then. Tell me a little bit about kind of that path. Sure, absolutely. So my, my grandfather, Joe Dom, like you said, started the first car wash in Indiana in 1948 in Fort Wayne. Um, he's still with us now, 95 years old, but we've definitely grown and changed a little bit since uh, that first car wash, obviously. But the one thing that hasn't changed is our commitment to our team members. Yeah and to just making sure we're always customer focused, both internally and externally. And uh, my grandfather really laid the foundation for that. So talk to me a little bit about then um, Indiana for a long time, really strong growth there, expanding and very smartly uh, kind of growing the business. And then all of a sudden, here we are, we're standing in Minnesota, which you guys, I don't know what how you're doing it. I've got my earmuffs on, I've got a base layer. <laughs> we were not prepared. Yeah. <laughs> we exactly. were not prepared. Exactly. So, so why Minnesota? Why come here? Why start to sure. expand? Well, um, obviously Indiana is a, a great market for us. It's our home base and uh, we're still growing there. But we have a lot of wonderful team members, managers, that they want to make sure that they can progress in their career. And we want to give them the opportunities to do that. Yep. So we kind of started thinking, yes, there's growth opportunities in Indiana, but where's that next market we could go to? 
And I'll tell you what, when we came to Minnesota, Minneapolis, and drove around, it felt a lot like Indianapolis. A lot bigger, yeah. but a lot very similar, except it gets a little colder. Uh, but we love the salt and snow. Dirty cars yes. are yes. a good thing. Yes. So, so that was, that yeah. was uh, the, the, the thing that signed the deal, all the salt and dirty cars. So we love it. As we have today. Yeah, As yeah we have it's today. Like, this is like a, oh these cars God. are beautiful. This is wonderful. This is like liquid gold, like yeah. coming up from the sky. It's, yeah. like, yes. it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about as you make that transition into a new market, what did you have to kind of look out for? What did you have to really make sure you were considering as you try to bring the business to a new, new place? Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of things to consider, but uh, the most important thing to consider, we wanted to make sure that we brought our culture here. Yeah. And um, the only way you're going to get your culture is if, if you move people that we had in Indiana up here to Minnesota. So we, uh, we talked to some of our top managers um, that really embrace our culture. And we opened this store with uh, five different managers. Mm -hmm. So move five people up and then a couple associates as well. When you go to a new area, we, we talked to some other, uh, other businesses, multi-unit retail, and they told us that your culture, it's like a rock of Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a strong enough rock there, people will start to chisel away at it a little bit. So we brought the rock of Gibraltar of our culture up here. And uh, for that reason, we're off to a real good start. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that's a thing that um, you all have been known for for a long time, right? Like bringing really great people um, so you hire right, and then you develop those people from the ground up, and it creates this, it creates a car wash career, right, which yes. didn't used to exist, really. But you guys are doing a great job with that. I think the culture is a big piece. Wait, tell, wait. Me, tell me more about, like, as you have established that, why is that so huge? Well, we have some area directors that, uh, in fact, the area director here that I think are going to speak with a yep. little bit later today, Jason Nicole, he's been on the team for, for 25 years, and many of our area directors, they started in high school. And they didn't aspire to be a lifelong car washer when they were 16 years of age, but here they are, uh, 45, 50, 55 years of age, and, and they're serving as area directors, and they, they really enjoy our culture, and they're huge advocates of everything that we do at Crew. So it's worked out really well. Yeah, I love that. I love that. We talk about it, I, like I'm a, I'm a huge people, or people kind of drive the business person, and I really love to see what you all do. I, I, like I've been admiring it for many years, ever since I used to live in Indianapolis. Um, one of the other things though about when you move into a new market and, and we talk about it a lot about with the competition coming in everywhere how do you differentiate i think one of the ways that you guys do that is the people mm -hmm. um, obviously it's a great product you guys are putting out but then there's this other piece that you guys are really really known for and that is community impact yes. talk a little bit about that for me sure no a absolutely no i'm um, speaking of culture uh, giving back to the community that's just part of it for us yeah. uh, we feel like we're fortunate enough to come into these businesses, these cities, uh, these towns. We want to make sure we do our part and give back. So uh, today we're partnering with a wonderful organization that we have for many years, Big Brothers Big Sisters. Yep. And we're raising money through a free car wash weekend. Um, you know, this Friday, Saturday and Sunday, free car wash. and. Uh, any donation we're giving back to Big Brothers Big Sisters. And that's really just the start of it. We, we plan to get involved in other organizations here in the community yeah. and uh, back home in Indy. We have a fundraising program that has been a part of what we do for 20 years where we give 50% uh, of the proceeds back to an, any nonprofit when they sell our coupons. Okay. Our, uh, our BHAG at Crew, our vision at Crew, is to be a role model for the service industry. And we break that into three components. We want to be a role model in the way that we treat our, our customers, the yeah. customer service that we give, uh, then the way that we treat our team members, the way that we grow, mentor, develop our team members. And the third part of that being a role model is the way that we get back to the communities yeah. where we do business. So, Well, and I, I think it makes a tremendous difference in terms of how you show up and how you partner because guess what? If, if you're just the car wash that comes in, the chamber and uh, the, the people that are kind of your, your, your neighbors in the space, they, you know, whatever, there's another business coming in. But when you come in and you have a really good footprint about what you're going to do to drive impact in that area, I think that makes a tremendous difference in just being a good neighbor, frankly. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're going to have the chance today to kind of look at some of the, what's going on in the tunnel. We're going to look at that. Um, it's cold out here, mm -hmm. but it's really hot in there. Can you just like for a minute talk to me about what you guys are doing inside the tunnel? Um, we do have a very warm drying chamber. Yeah. We, uh, we run uh, 16, 15 horsepower fans, and then we have a 4 million BTU furnace. So we run our drying chambers at about 125 degrees, and uh, the discharge temperatures, they're, they're around 200 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. So hot air drying, it really helps, especially in this type of a climate. 
Yeah, well, and, and you were telling me, uh, you guys coming into Minnesota, your plan here is wash cars all the time, right? Mm -hmm. ne never close. And you and this is not closed. No, no, no we do not close. We yeah, do yeah. not close at crew car yeah. wash. So. So, so if you're watching this or listening to this, uh, in Minnesota, if you're not from here, it gets in the minus 20s, maybe minus 30s, wind chills into the minus 60s. Um, that's hard to wash cars in, but you guys are doing it. What's the key? Well, first, I think rotating our team members. Yeah, yes, yes, a yes, lot yes. of hot chocolate, yeah. hand warmers, and um, you know, different uniforms up here to make sure that our team members are, are staying warm and staying safe. Uh, but a lot of heat in the tunnel, a mm -hmm. lot of floor heat at yeah. the entrance, floor heat at the exit, and then that hot air drying system. And then we also use a lot of hot water. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So a lot of heat, a lot of, a lot of heat. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Those bills go up a little bit, but that's exactly. okay. Cause they, they do. Cause you stay open. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for standing here and, and braving the cold with me a little bit uh, to talk today. Uh, we're going to get a chance to talk to some other folks from crew uh, to share this story. Yeah. We're going to talk hey, to some folks from big brothers. And big yes. Sisters. Awesome. Yeah, we're really thank glad you're here. Thank you so much, Matt. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, friends, there you have it. That was crew car wash, St. Cloud, Minnesota. And just a little bit of their story and how they're approaching this grand opening, how they're getting into this new market, and how they're making a tremendous impact in their community. I've got my uh, little spinner uh, to take home to the kids. Uh, this is one of those things that this organization has always been about the people and about the family and about being in the people business, but just happening to wash cars. Until next time, my friends, there's just one thing you've got to do, and that is keep it clean. <laughs>